Hello, welcome. Uh, I'm Brian Schwartz, a Director of Product Marketing here at Fortinet, and I'm here to talk about how FortiWeb Cloud is helping our customers protect against vulnerabilities, including uh, log for the LogForge vulnerability that's been in the news quite a bit in recent months. So when we think about FortiWeb and, and, and the use cases we're trying to address with our FortiWeb Cloud solution, what we, uh, we're really kind of four key things we're working on here. One is there's a core web application security use case that is about protecting your web applications from a range of threats, including things that we think of as kind of the traditional OWASP top 10. That would be things like SQL injection attacks, cross-site scripting, that sort of thing, but also unknown threats that may not have uh, be part be part of that cat those uh, categories, but that we still need to protect against. And this is where we bring machine learning in, so that the WAF can learn your uh, your application, understand how it's typically how it typically behaves, how your users typically behave, and that way we can detect anomalies and, and stop threats for which maybe signatures don't yet exist. We also cover bot defense, uh, which is protecting against the full range of malicious bot activity. If you're like me, you've probably identified all the bridges and bicycles and trains you ever want to from photographs. And the reality of it's not a great user experience to detect bots that way. And it's also maybe not that effective as computers get really good at image recognition. So we're going to give you more sophisticated tools to identify bots and apply appropriate policies and controls. We also want to help you with regulatory compliance. I never think of regulatory compliance as the end of the conversation, but in the in terms of WAF, it is often one of the first uh, reasons why people start looking into this space because a number of regulatory compliance frameworks do require you to have a WAF or similar solution in place. And then last but not least, we need to broaden our idea of what a web application is because the core technologies that we use to create really nice interactive web applications uh, in particular, the APIs get used for lots of other things today. So those web APIs may actually be a use for business to business communication where there's no web browser ever involved or could be used for business to business. Um, sorry, could also be used for supporting things like mobile applications. And so these APIs also need that uh, that kind of defense. And so for a complete solution, we think we need to cover all of these use cases. Now we've been in the WAF business for quite a few years and we have our, our appliance-based solutions, but uh, a couple of years ago, we introduced our cloud WAF as a service for the web cloud. And what this is, is we're not just spinning up a bunch of virtual machines to give you, um, to give you this capability. We've actually created a, a multi-tenant solution. And one of the advantages of this is it gives us very elastic capacity. So you can use this to protect very small applications at reasonable cost, but we can scale up to big enterprise applications as well. It's also deployed in the same region in within your cloud provider. So if you're using uh, Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, or Oracle Cloud, we can actually deploy the inspection component within that cloud environment. So we're running very close to your application, gives you great performance. It can simplify your regulatory environment because you're not uh, running your uh, security solution in a different regulatory environment than your uh, application itself. And it can also help uh, give you more efficiency in terms of bandwidth costs by not making you send data out of your cloud environment to say an external service. It's also multi-cloud, meaning you can apply exactly the same controls regardless of which of these cloud providers you use, or even to protect uh, applications that are not yet running in the cloud. Key benefit of this is really rapid deployment. So because it's a WAF as a service, you're not having to spin up virtual machines, you're not having to manage uh, fault tolerance, you're not having to th think about your scaling. We take care of all of that for you. And this can actually be set up in just a few minutes and be ready to go. So there's, it's a way to uh, very efficiently and quickly provide the protection that you need. Now, beyond that, what's really important is this is all backed up by FortiGuard Labs. We are actually doing all of the research and threat, uh, gathering threat intelligence, pushing out new analytics, and providing you a, an up-to-date, continuously updated service to protect your applications. And that's why uh, when something like the LogForge vulnerability comes out, we're already in motion. We're, we're there to analyze it, figure out the right controls, and then again, push out uh, the, the right uh, analytics to help you uh, mitigate that risk. So what I'd like to do now is hand it over and let's take a look at a demo of, and this gets a little more specific about what we're doing to protect you with uh, uh, against the Log4j vulnerability. Thank you so much, Brian. And um, before we actually go into the demo and see how FortiWeb Cloud will block the Log4j attack, right? I just wanted to show how easy it is to onboard the application that you would like to protect using FortiWeb SaaS. So. 
um, there are like few steps which you go through. So the first step is um, to actually um, put in the name of the application. This is something arbitrary, so you could just uh, put in there and then um, select the domain name of uh, your application, the FQDN of the application. And then in the next step, um, the FortiWeb will be actually seeing what the domain is uh, is resolving to the IP address of the domain. Um, if it's if it's not something like if your application is basically hosted on more than one server, you could still see those IP addresses of the, your um, application of the service where your application is hosted. Um, if not, you can always customize the IP address um, where it's hosted. And then the only test we need to do here is that. FortiWeb wants to, SAS wants to verify that it's able to reach this IP address, no problem. So we'll click on the test origin server and it will return back that, you know, it successfully was able to reach that IP address. And then we'll click next. Um, this is the place where we could enable a CDN or turn it off. But um, what the CDN does is that the data on your origin servers will be cached in the FortiWeb Cloud scrubbing centers. Um, and we have scrubbing centers distributed around the world or within a certain continent. So if you have users in Americas, you could select just the Americas as a continent. But if your application is being um, you know, uh, accessed by users all over the world, you can always select the global. So it does add the scrubbing centers into the list. Um, and when users request the data from your application, they can be directed to the nearest scrubbing center and rendered with the requested data. We click next. Um, and then here is the place where we can enable block mode or not. What this means is that um, if you enable block mode uh, and based on the policies you configure after you onboard your application, um, it's going to block the traffic. Um, in, it will intercept the traffic and start blocking. But if you turn this off, what it means is it's in a monitor mode um, where the traffic is still intercepted by FortiWeb and it will uh, check the traffic, apply the policies, but it won't block. Rather, it would just show show the attacks that are being targeted to your application on the uh, um, logs um, as an alert, so that you know the the administrators does know what attacks are coming to your application, and they can take certain actions and create the policies later on. So we'll just turn off the block mode for now and click save. And the last step is to actually um, go and change the DNS record um, because FortiWeb will be intercepting the traffic. It has to, um, you know, the, the, I, the current DNS record, which is actually pointing to the IP address to the public IP, has to be changed to the CNAME record. And this is also, also to make sure that the domain is owned by you. So that's how easy it is to onboard the application. Um, for the demo purpose, we have already onboarded uh, an application here, which is ready to go. And um, we have some security rules or known attacks is called, which is by default, we have some signatures that we could turn on. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's already turned on. That means all the signatures in the database will be applied against your application. So um, for my uh, WAF uh, demo as an application, all of the signatures are tur turned on for different aspects or different um, SQL injection attacks or cross-site scripting and general attacks. Now, um, I'll just generate a payload uh, for the log4j attack. And right now, my block mode is turned off. That means that FortiWeb is, uh, SAS is not going to block this attack, but rather it would just allow it, but we could see in the logs so um, I have this curl request already ready to go to my server and I click OK. That means, yes, I'm getting a response for the log4j attack I did. But let's turn, turn the block mode on and see what happens. So since I had turned off the block mode and I did mention about the alert only mode before, which is called the monitor mode, we do see that it's in the monitor mode, uh, but it did see there is a known exploit here. And then we have a CV ID as well. So since uh, we turn on the block mode, let's do this attack again. And then you should see that um, if I actually maximize the screen, you do see there is a client IP address and then the attack ID 
Um, and then the message ID, this is something which is being displayed by FortiWeb SAS as a HTML, and that means it's block and it's blocking this uh, web attack. So if we actually refresh the logs again, will be coming in a bit. Um, we have already something um, which you know which was tried from the same IP in the block mode. So if I pull it up um, before we could see it in the logs, um, there is a CV ID that generated. So if I click this CV ID information, you do see that FortiWeb has the signature which actually matched the pattern of this uh, request and it flagged as an attack and it's saying that um, it's a Apache log4j um, attack in the description. So um, and then we also have the signature ID so we can actually check in the signature database which was put in by a FortiGuard labs that uh, the attack again the payload has matched this signature ID within that CVE um, and it's blocking that uh, request. So if we refresh that again, we do see that the recent one which we have actually which I've actually done, um, that's again the log4j attack and that's how FortiWeb will block these attacks with the security rules and the signature database. Thank you for watching.